Hey there, welcome to Nutri IQ Radio, where we talk about all things food, fitness, and feeling good to help you clear the confusion and get your results your way. I'm your host, Sean Hare. And I'm Sean's personal assistant, Jim Gale. Yeah, you file like those papers. Home, you? You, you file those papers, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've disliked all of these scenarios up to now, but I knew you'd like that one. I like it. I like it. More of that, please. <laughs> anyway. Let's get into the show. Uh, we'll kick it off with the news as usual. So first bit of big news is that by the time this episode goes out on Monday, we will be launching in three weeks time. That means the smart plan is available for you to download, to use, to get your plan and basically start getting results in a super easy way. So yeah, exciting times. Very exciting times three weeks to go and obviously we'll remind you next week as well and the week after and every day in between uh but if you want to make sure that you're one of the first to know when the smart plan is available and you can get yours you can click the link that i will put in the podcast notes in the description for the video if you're watching on youtube where you can sign up to our weekly email newsletter and we'll let you know as soon as the smart plan becomes available so you can go and get yours and take advantage of the three for two offer we'll be running as well cool big start I like it. it sweet nothing from jim on that one he's just excited the news just been locked away <laughs> in my room <laughs> All right. <working> out. <laughs> cool other bits of news is because we are launching in three weeks on Facebook at the minute on our Facebook group, the Nutri I crew, we've got our beta testers using the app on the Facebook group now. And we have started getting pictures through of the meals they've been cooking. And basically they look amazing. They, do look they all look so yeah. good. Um, so buzzing with them. Cause it's just kind of a good confirmation for us that the meals are easy to make as well because people are making them and they look really good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I was a little bit like, I, I'm not very good at taking pictures of food, I don't think. Um, mm. So like I thought when we start asking people to do it, uh, it's going to be hard to find good ones. But most of the ones that people are sending through like look like professional almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think with the quality of like cameras and stuff on phones now, it's, it's easy enough. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. And that's all exciting stuff. And the third bit of news, which basically takes us into the main topic, is a bit of news that everybody's been talking about, everybody's been making a big deal about, which isn't really that big a deal. I mean, it's just one person that's done a thing. But as I'm sure you're aware, Adele has lost loads of weight. Top work, Adele. Well done. Um, Really, that's all you really need to say on the matter. I think (laughs) but um like as far as Adele's thing goes like like you say it's um it is just it's one person like well done to her like kudos because it is amazing what she's done there um but I, I don't know like since we've been on lockdown I feel like people care so much less about what celebrities are doing now um like it's kind of it's almost like broken through the the charade almost of yeah. like the whole celebrity thing. But then this has come along and, and everybody's been talking about it. And yeah. um, like it's a huge, huge thing. And in, in both parties as well, there's been a lot of controversy. So mm. it'd be interesting yeah. to talk about that. Part of that of why it's been such a big deal might be because like you say, we are on lockdown and people are maybe feeling a bit less happy with themselves. Obviously some of us will have gone down the route of, do you know what? This is lockdown it's a few weeks, months, whatever. I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to let things relax. And that's fine. You can do that. Like that's absolutely no problem. But I just think maybe some people who have done that have then seen that Adele has done a really good job on weight loss and maybe you're just feeling a bit guilty about it when they don't need to, because, yeah. you know, just Adele's lost the weight. The person who might be thinking that has probably lost weight in the past. We can all just do it again. It's not to worry about, but, um, what we're going to get into today is how Adele has gone about doing that. And I think that's where some of the controversy has come from because it's a diet. It's a named diet um, that some people might not agree with the methods of, but what we're going to talk about today is basically just what the method is 
just to let anybody listening who might have heard bits and pieces from friends on Facebook or bits of newspapers or whatever can understand that this diet that Adele has chosen to follow is just a diet like any other. It all boils down to the same basic principles, the same ideas. It's nothing to get too excited about. It's just something that Adele obviously has found for herself makes sense and works. And at the end of the day, if it works for you, crack on with it. We just want to make sure that anybody listening, as we said at the start of the podcast and every podcast, is able to clear the confusion around what it is and yeah. just, yeah, understand what's yeah, going on. It's important like, to break down the, the hidden complexities of, of anything like this. And mm-hmm. every time we do a topic like this where it is talking about a specific um, protocol, like diet protocol, um, it's important to, to talk more in depth about what it entails and why it might work for some and not others and, and why it's never a one-size-fits-all um, kind of scenario. I think that's just important because the way that media portray and I haven't even seen that it's confirmed that Adele did this. Yeah, exactly, time. yeah. That doesn't matter because people are still saying that that's the case. So other people will still see it and hear that and go, oh, wow great diet i'm gonna do it and so yeah it's just important to break down the well open it up to to why it's relevant and who should and shouldn't be using it or how you can make your own decision on that yeah and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to break down what the diet is what the method is what the kind of proposed principles and benefits of it are and then we're going to break down for you guys listening how some of those things may or may not be completely the truth and how some of it is just kind of the hand waving and the facade of it. Because like we said before, everything at the end of the day works in the same way. It's just packaged up and looks a bit different. And as Jim said there, as we do more of these, more of these diet breakdowns to help make things more simple to understand and clearer, you guys listening on will start to see that again and again, these same things crop up and just help you see that things are just packaged in a different way. And there's nothing special. There's no magic pill, one size fits all, like Jim said. Uh, So let's get into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I thought we'd start off by just explaining what the diet is and what it kind of proposes. So this diet that Adele is apparently been following is something called the cert food diet and in my accent that might sound like a totally different word so i'm going to spell it out for you literally it's s-i-r-t food diet okay and so what that means is it's advertised as a revolutionary new diet and health plan that works by turning on your quote-unquote skinny gene and i'm just reading this off something on my phone so that's why it sounds like it makes so much sense rather than me rambling on. But basically, this diet is based on research on sirtuins, which is a group of seven proteins found in the body that has been shown to regulate a variety of functions, including metabolism, inflammation, and lifespan. Now, certain natural compounds might be able to increase the levels of these proteins and then help with those functions of metabolism, inflammation, and lifespan and they are dubbed as cert foods because they are foods that promote those cert proteins. And a list of those top 20 cert foods, it's got on here, but I'll just pick out some of the key ones. You've got kale, you've got strawberries, parsley, extra virgin olive oil, turmeric, uh, blueberries, coffee, and then the sort of popular ones to talk about, which is dark chocolate and red wine. So we'll stop there for a minute before we get into everything else of how things work. And yeah, just talk about that first point. So what do you got to say there, Jim? Um, So uh, healthy foods, essentially. Um, Like like we were saying before we started recording, if you was to take a list of sort of the most popular antioxidant-rich foods, and put it next to this one, it'd be pretty much the same um, list. Uh, anti-inflammatory 
as well. Um, yeah, it's just, it's like you said, it's just packaged in a different way, like calling it the cert food diet um, because you've picked out a, a bit of research that shows that those foods might express those proteins and genes and whatever better. Um, it's just it's just repackaging healthy food. Like that's just a list of healthy foods. Yeah. And that is in a similar way to a lot of other diets, named and branded diets. There's always two sides to it. Of course, you've got your health side and your weight loss, your weight management side. And like we always say, like we understand weight management comes down to controlling calorie intake, whether that's getting more or less, whatever the situation is. And in terms of health, that's eating better foods, less junk food, more natural foods. Like you said, there more foods that are higher in antioxidants, like blueberries, higher in terms of anti-inflammatory effects, like turmeric. And yeah, again, like we said before we start recording, those dark chocolate, red wine, that, that stuff comes up all the time because it's, a, it's an exciting it sounds like a sort of against the grain thing to talk about, but it's not because those foods do have certain compounds in them that promote those things. So that's all it is. It's not, it's nothing new. It's nothing special. It's just, like I said, healthy foods that will make you feel a bit better. Yeah. If anything, it's, it's kind of just, um, it's more restrictive then like if you was to say, so we'll obviously we'll get onto like the calorie part of this specific diet in a second, but if you was to say like X amount of calories is like this diet protocol mm -hmm. um, and you have to do it eating healthy foods, um, by saying we've found a bunch of foods that are proven to express um, sirtuin proteins, um, you actually just narrowing that list of foods that you eat. so all you're doing is being more restrictive on what someone can actually eat mm -hmm. uh, within that set yeah. calorie amount so it seems more restrictive really than anything and i think like we talked about last week the uh what was the seed chia seeds in the water seed, yeah like you, you're just weighing up the ratio of is is the slight health benefit from that thing worth the calories that you're using it on or in this case is the slight potential health benefit from these particular foods worth restricting yourself to those foods mm -hmm. it's kind of like on a, you just sort of decide for yourself but to me it seems it's just more restrictive yeah that's one of those it says you know those foods that i read out there they were from the top 20 that is, I'm not sure whether it's on their website or in the guide that you get or whatever. Um, you know, of course, they're trying to prompt you to have more of these high sirtuin promoting foods. And, you know, depending on the kind of person then that follows it, you might get someone who goes, right, top 20, cert foods, I'm going to get as much of those as I can, which then might come at the detriment, as you say, of other health promoting foods. Um, and in that way, it could become more restrictive. But if you take that kind of more wholesome view of, okay, wholesome foods gives a whole lot of benefit in all different ways. The more you get of different things in terms of foods, the more you get of different things in terms of these minerals, vitamins, proteins that are useful, things like that. Yeah. And yeah, that's all it boils down to. Like you say, they've just kind of chosen to pick out some certain ones based on a particular bit of research uh, but despite that that brings us on to the next part of the the calorie control part of the diet so if you're looking to do the diet for weight loss there's no evidence that shows that consuming a diet that is high in these cert foods has any benefit on weight loss whatsoever over any other calorie controlled diet so again, as we've said before, as you know, the entire smart plan is based on, if you're trying to manage your weight, then it's the calories, the energy in, the energy out, the balance of that, that matters. And so that's where obviously there is an element of calorie control in this diet as well to yes. help you create that 
calorie deficit. Do you want to break that down? Yep. So I'll go through that. What? How calorie deficit works? Or yeah, no, sorry. How how they've. Oh set yeah, yeah. Down. Yeah. So I'll do that now. So let me just get that little bit up. So again, I'm just going to read this out so it's easier for me to to go through. So there are two phases to the set food diet. The first phase, phase one, lasts for seven days and involves calorie restriction and lots of green juice. It's intended to jumpstart your weight loss and claims to help you lose seven pounds or 3.2 kilos in seven days. During the first three days of phase one, calorie intake is restricted to a thousand calories. You drink three green juices per day plus one meal. Each day you can choose from recipes in the book, which involves all set foods as a main part of the meal. Sorry, which all involves set foods as a main part of that meal. Gives you a couple of examples for meals, but we don't need to know that. And then on days four to seven of phase one, the calorie intake is increased to 1500 calories. And this includes two green juices per day and two more set food rich meals, which you can choose from the book. Now, just before we get into phase two, I want to mention the green juices that it's talking about. They are juices that you make yourself so it's not like a traditional shake diet in that you have to buy the shakes and stuff like that it's just you have to put a juice together so you have to buy a juicer so that's a cost to you um and then you have to juice all these things together to get the juice out of it uh but anyway just so people know phase two lasts then for two weeks and during this maintenance phase, you should continue to steadily lose weight. At least that's the idea of what would happen. There's no specific calorie limit for this phase. Instead, you eat three meals full of set foods, as you know, recommended from the recipe book, and one green juice per day. And then after the diet, you can repeat those two phases as often as you want to continue to boost your weight loss. However, you are generally encouraged to continue certifying your diet after you complete those two phases by incorporating certain foods regularly into your meals. So there are a few different set food diet books to help you get recipe ideas and, and you're encouraged to keep drinking the green juices as well. And that's how it works in a nutshell. Okay. So... Just breaking that down then, you've got um, an extreme calorie restriction for week one. Yeah, for the first few and days, yeah. First few days, sorry, for four days, was it three or four? Yeah. Um, and then increase the calories a bit, or by 50% for the second part of that first week. Um, and then, you, uh, and then what is it like using your being intuitive about it or giving sort of, yourself yeah, a goal or... From what I could find, there's not really much sort of structured guidance after that. The idea to me seems to be that you would be eating from this recipe book that they've given you, which if the thousand calories of phase one comes from one of the recipes and three green juices, and then in phase two comes from three meals and one green juice, the meals must be calorie controlled in some way for them to be able to be confident that that's how much you're having. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so if you're continue, if you're advised to continue to eat in that way and to drink the juices in that way, the odds are that you would stick to that kind of calorie intake, but that wouldn't be guaranteed. It's just, that's kind of what you would hope would be the case. Um, but then, of course, if that isn't the case and your weight loss stalls, it's kind of put across that you need to then get more of those set foods into your diet again. So you should go through phases one and two again to sort of boost that stuff. Right. Which to me kind of implies that what they're implying is that it's the, it is the set foods that are creating the change. But as you mentioned at the start of things there, if you've got a severe calorie restriction at the start to a thousand calories for the first three days, then that is going to be creating a calorie deficit. And I was just working out there. If you had a week of a thousand calories for three days, 1500 for four days, you would have an average daily intake of 1,285 calories. 
So taking the week average into account, even though it does increase your calories a little bit, it's still quite low. It's pretty low. And is most likely to create a deficit because of that. Yeah. Um, And that's basically it. Yeah, it's going to be creating a deficit as well. Is that like there's absolutely no, um, like personalization? Like everyone that does this diet, that's the numbers for them. Mm -hmm. Whether they weigh 120 kilos or 45 kilos. Yeah. So yeah, in that way, it's it's kind of similar to as I kind of mentioned earlier, your kind of shake diets where you've got your first couple of phases where your first week is around a thousand calories and so that is of course going to be creating a calorie deficit for 99 percent of people and so that then is going to prompt that initial weight loss and again something we mentioned before we started recording is if you've got uh quite then a severe calorie deficit and you are also being prompted to exercise you'll probably be exercising more than you normally would what you're also going to be doing is using up your glycogen stores because they're not going to be being replenished by the diet. And then what that does is as you use up your glycogen stores, you lose what we call your water weight, which is something you might have heard of if you've looked into the keto diet or Atkins and things like that. And so again, those seven pounds, they say you're likely to lose in the first week would most likely be coming from more so the water weight than any actual body fat loss some of it might be but that's another thing to bear in mind you know that the weight you lose isn't necessarily just going to be your body fat it's going to be some water as well and that might steady out and make you feel like you're not making the progress you were before yeah i think as well then you're also opening yourself up to the danger of yo-yoing and for most people especially when you've got such a strict restriction at first and then such lax um, guides afterwards. Mm-hmm. So like you're completely restricting yourself for a week down to an average of 1,285 calories, which is really low for yeah. most people. Mm-hmm. And then after that week of when, by the way, you're going to be starving, um, you're going to feel like you're starving. Yeah. Then it just goes to kind of make up your own mind and, yeah, and not specific to this diet, but just diets in general where you're restricting your calories extreme to an extreme point like that. Um, I think your decision-making it becomes compromised um, because you have to think about, like, there's a lot of processes going on in your body, and your, body's, your, your body is sort of evolved to survive, mm-hmm. like, ultimately so when you put any position you put yourself in with your actions your uh, body is going to have a response to it and that response is always geared towards making sure you don't die um so and so like calorie restriction extreme calorie restriction alters your decision making process alters your um sort of hormones on some level um, to the point where you can't really th- think as rationally as you usually would. So I think it's quite a dangerous thing, really, especially when it goes from one extreme to the other. Yeah, like I said, you are probably quite likely to end up yo-yoing. And if yo-yo dieting is something that you as a listener know you are kind of not accustomed to or a victim of, but something that you can easily fall into, then this probably isn't the way to go for you because to yo-yo is almost recommended by them mm. saying you should repeat phases one and two. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, there's only really one other thing to mention as to how this would affect you. And then beyond that, you know, you can listen to this and if you think it makes sense for you and it would be a, a good lifestyle fit for you, then by all means, go ahead and try it. Uh, but if it's not, then we just want to make sure that you know that before you do it and have to find out the long way. Uh, yeah. So that 
last thing I wanted to mention was the green juices. So you said there after the first week, you're going to be starving. And so that in itself is going to be likely to make you overeat a little bit. Uh, The other thing of that is in the first three days, you're having three green juices and one meal. So yeah, you're probably going to feel quite hungry. And in the second part of phase one, you're having two green juices and two or more meals. I couldn't quite work out if it was two or three. Um, But either way, if you're having a lot of your calorie intake coming from juices, you're not going to be full because although those juices might have a lot of the health benefits in terms of the vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, things like that from the fruit, from the vegetable, you don't have any of the fiber anymore. And that's the benefit of a smoothie over juicing because fiber, as I'm sure you probably know, helps to keep your gut regular, but also because of that, it helps you feel fuller. So if you have a juice compared to a smoothie, that in itself, even though it's basically the same things, you're not going to feel as full from a juice. So like Jim said, throughout that first week, it might be quite hard and you would feel quite restricted and probably quite hungry because you're not getting the fiber in from that as well. And again, if you're having juices and one meal, you're probably not going to get a lot of protein to fill you up or fats to fill you up. And that again is going to make you feel a little bit hungrier um, and might not leave you in a good place at the end of the day. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. it I think it's like a difficult one because obviously it kind of sounds like we're very against it. Um, but like you said, it, it comes down to the individual. Like it, if someone wants, if Adele actually did use this diet and it worked for her, then it worked for her. That means it can work for people, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I think ultimately what it comes down to is honesty. And it's, it's the same with any goal setting. Um, the, for me, the main reason that people don't hit their target when they give themselves a goal is because they've been dishonest with themselves about what they're willing to do to get to that place. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, everybody does it. Like you set yourself a goal and you say, I'm going to train this many times a week. I'm going to eat this foods. I'm going to stick to that. I'm not going to eat this. Um, I'm going to say no to social gatherings or, you know, not going to um, celebrations and stuff. And, you, it's this well it's not all the time but if you failed to do those things to hit that target it's because at the start you were unrealistic and and i consider it dishonest with yourself mm-hmm. about what you are actually willing to sacrifice to get that target there's nothing wrong with with that like that doesn't mm-hmm. make you undisciplined yeah. or or like have bad willpower it just means you set your bar too high for yourself and like that, again, like you said before, Sean, the whole point of the SMART plan is to fit into whatever you're willing to do to get to that end point. But you've got to be honest with yourself about what that is, what it is you're willing to give up um, to hit those targets. And there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, with sort of lowering that bar a bit to make sure that you can actually sustain those things for long enough to hit the target. I think as well on that point, just as a kind of caveat there, is that a lot of people or coaches will say, if you can't do it, if you if it's not sustainable for life, <clears throat> then you shouldn't do it. And, it, and I, I would disagree with that. I think that if you give yourself a target of of, let's say, losing a stone in two months, and you work out that you need to do this, this, and this, in that time to get to that result. If you can manage that and do achieve that, um, you don't have to sustain the same things for the whole of your life. Like the point of getting to that target is being sort of in a deficit enough to get there in that time. And once you've got there, then you're going to change what you're doing because you got, you hit your target. So it doesn't have to be lifetime sustainable. It only has to be sustainable for the amount of time you need to do it to achieve that goal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's down to that. Yeah, because I had that kind of conversation with somebody the other day 
which is probably a good way to bring us over to the letters section. Uh, somebody asked me if, I can't remember how the conversation started, but I let them know that something important to bear in mind is that this doesn't have to be for life because once you've created your deficit and you've got to the point where you've lost the amount of weight you want to lose, you then go to a calorie maintenance level, which means once you eat your goal, you can actually eat a little bit more which a lot of people forget. It's not that I've got to hit 1500 calories and that's me for the rest of my life. It's you can probably hit 1500 calories. And then once you're where you want to be, you can go back up to 1700 or 1800, whatever the, the point might be for you, uh, which is a good thing to remember for anybody that is losing weight. It's that, yeah, a diet, it is by design, a little bit restrictive. It has to be, but then that restriction does end when you reach the point you want to reach it's just yeah. worth bearing in mind that it doesn't it doesn't end and go back to the way it was before it ends and goes back to a midpoint yeah you know i think I mean? that yeah that that's where when someone sort of yo oh yeah yo yos when they do set the restrictions too tightly they eat sort of less let's just say they eat too little at the start mm -hmm. and then they end up not being able to sustain sustain that too long enough to get their target so they yo-yo up well past what their maintenance would be um and they end up sort of putting the weight back on or going even further and then they go through that cycle and people go through doing that for a year say just as an example and their average is their maintenance because they just kept going down or down yeah, or yeah, yeah. Down. and it could just be don't start so far down on the restriction level. Um, maintain it for long enough to hit that goal. And then you can come back up to what that average over the year was and just sustain it and just be, you know, if that was the, the goal weight that you told yourself you would be um, sort of, uh, I don't want to say happy with, but that you sort of, you'd like being at that weight. Um, then you can just maintain it and it's, it's a lot easier to maintain rather than trying to get it in a week and just end it up going like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've said all we need to say on the set food diet because we've already basically moved on from it. <laughs> so let's just wrap up that section. So just to summarize the set food diet, you restrict your calories quite a bit at the start. You ease them off towards the end as with most of the diets it all boils down to that calorie deficit, that calorie balance as to whether you lose weight or not, because research has shown us that there is no significant difference for weight loss than there is over any other calorie controlled diet. And in terms of the health side of things, as we said at the start, you're going to be eating more healthy foods and therefore you would more than likely be a bit healthier. And that's about all there is to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Time for letters? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So as we move into the letters section of the show, as always, if you've got any questions at all about the cert food diet, just let us know. Uh, we'll get back to you. We might bring up on the show next week. Drop me an email to Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at Nutri-IQ.net. And again, the link to do that will also be in the description and the show notes if you want to drop me an email and ask a question. Or if you just want to let us know what you think of the show in general, or just tell us about your day. You know, just send us a letter, let us know what you think. Um, anyway. Lonely, man. Just talk to us. Yeah, I'm lonely. It's locked down. <laughs> send me a letter. Um, yeah, cool. So let's get into them then. Uh, you want to start? Yeah. Um, so like, said, like Sean said earlier, we've opened up the um, sort of beta version of the app for testing. Um, and we've also opened up the group to those people that are testing. So we've had a few questions uh, in the group. Um, first one comes from Sean, um, who sent a picture of her breakfast in, and it was granola with Greek yogurt, loads of strawberries in there, it looks great. Um, and she said, I often add um, cacao powder, never know if I'm saying that right, um, because she loves chocolate and flax seeds but she's never sure if that's wasting her calories or making it healthier. Um, so we sort of had this discussion 
on our previous podcast about something slightly different. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to your uh, like just decision making. So yes, those things have health benefits. So adding them to your food will sort of give you those health benefits. They do also have calories. So it's gonna re- it's gonna take some of your calories from your allowance for the day, um, and you it, it's completely subjective. Like you need to decide whether having those things is worth um, using those or spending those calories. And in this case, I I, said, I answered the question on the group, and I said, in this case, I, I would say that it is because you've not just acknowledged the fact that it's got health benefits you've said that you like it (laughs) so yeah yeah, it's like obviously if you like it then it's worth having um it's worth using those calories on whereas i would say in a different scenario if you weren't a big fan of that thing and you just added it in because you thought it had the health benefit then obviously uh no it's probably not so yeah it's it's completely subjective but if if it adds to the enjoyment of that food go for it definitely yeah. Yeah, um, the second one is very similar. It comes from Laura. She said, um, what are opinions on tinned fruit? Uh, she said, obviously, the syrup ones won't be great, um, but more about the ones that are just in juices in tins. Mm-hmm. Uh, same. Yeah. It's pretty much going to be the same answer with all foods. Um, your you're going to have to just weigh up. You're going to have to look into it, like how much more calories are in that than you would just get from a fresh fruit, if any. Um, And is it worth having for you? Like the convenience of it, or if you prefer that fruit, uh, whatever is is sort of leading you towards having tinned fruit instead of fresh, um, is the benefit that it brings you worth any extra calories or extra sugars or anything that it that comes with it subjective yeah i think on that one as well when people often ask that question they're often thinking of it from a a nutrition side of things you know people often ask should i have fresh fruit or frozen as well uh or veg and it's the same uh on that side of things it doesn't make a massive bit of difference nothing that's worth thinking about anyway and so in that vein, then it comes down to what you said, more so convenience, because the calories aren't going to be that different if it is just the fruit in its own juice, because that's basically what fruit is. It's in its own juice anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so the calories aren't going to make a massive difference. So don't worry about that. If it fits into your, your targets, it fits. Don't worry. It's still as nutritious. It's not like you're going to be damaging yourself by having tin fruit. Don't worry about that. And if it's the case, as is the same case for most people with frozen fruit over fresh, if it's going to keep for longer, so you're not going to be wasting as much food, wasting as much money, things like that, then yeah, go for it. Don't worry. Yeah. I think it's one of those, like most people are struggling just to get the right uh, sort of calorie balance and maintain it. So adding on such intricate details into their food choices is is cart before the horse Mm -hmm. like like we just keep saying it what really matters is that you get the numbers right and that it fits into your lifestyle in such a way that you can maintain it for long enough to get the result um so when things like this when you start asking questions like this um you're probably just complicating it for yourself more than you need to yep with that being said, obviously you do need to pay attention to those things. Like if it comes in a syrup and and that does add on a bunch of calories, but you're not sort of thinking about it, then obviously those things need to be thought about. Um, like it, it needs to always be sort of calculated into your daily calorie allowance. But yeah, not like the health benefits side of it is not a major issue. Yeah, it's fine to have. And as long as it still fits into your targets, as I said, just crack on with it. It's fine. If it makes your life easier, don't worry. Cool. So the question I had this week was from a different Facebook group, actually, which 
essentially started, it was more of a conversation than just a one question. Uh, it says, can you please help me? Nothing's working and I'm so annoyed. So straight in, I was like, cool, what's going on? And I said, hey, if things aren't working, that just means the things that you're doing aren't tipping the balance enough for you to achieve what we call a calorie deficit. And then asked if she knew what that was just to make sure. Um, and she said, no, how do I find that balance? So then I just briefly explained what a calorie deficit is and why it matters. And I'll do that again now, just for anybody that's listening that is also thinking the same thing, because it can happen a lot that you can feel like you're doing all the right things, but you're not getting the result. And this is why. So the way calories work is that they are just a measure of energy. A calorie is a name for an amount of energy. And if you're consuming more energy than your body needs through your food, then your body stores that extra energy and you gain weight. On the other side of things, if you're consuming less energy than your body needs, your body uses up what it had stored before and you lose that weight. That is how calorie balance works, calories, gaining and losing weight. And so if you're consuming the same amount of energy as your body is using up day to day, your weight stays the same because it doesn't need to store the energy and it doesn't need to use any energy up that it's already got stored. So hopefully that in itself might clear things up. It did for, for this lady. And so I just said, you know, if you're not losing weight, it just means you're eating too much food. And I know that it can feel like you're not and you can be almost certain, but that is the case. They might be, you know, we talk about calories sneaking in. They're not little creatures with legs. They're not sneaking in anywhere, but they might just be coming in in places that you didn't expect. Like you said there, for example, if you're thinking of fruit and then you start to use tinned fruit with syrup, that might be adding in a bunch of calories you didn't think of. Uh, every time you use tomato ketchup or barbecue sauce, in my case, you're adding a few calories there. Uh, whenever you butter your toast, that can have quite a lot of calories that you might not be taking into account. There's just a lot of these little things that can be where the calories are coming from if the numbers don't seem to be adding up. And on that note of the numbers not seeming to add up, uh, this lady also then asked, has it got anything to do with my age or hormones? And I just said no. Because, again, a lot of things can influence how many calories your body uses up. That's why whenever you use a calorie calculator, it does ask for your age because your calorie needs do change slightly. But then, as I mentioned, in terms of how calorie balance works, it's the relationship between how much you're getting in and how much you need. If that need side of the equation changes, that just means that the amount you're taking in needs to change as well. It doesn't mean that because the amount that you need has changed that the balance will always be off. It just means that you need to take that into account and be yeah. aware of that. Yeah. So um, obviously uh, as someone gets older um, or not even necessarily older, but your, your calorie requirement can change for so many reasons. It's like how many calories you burn in a day um, can change throughout different processes, let's just say, of, of the human body, whether it's aging or, or anything else. Um, but it's never going to stop you from losing weight if you've got the balance right, is what you're saying there, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You, it's not like some people get stuck in the, the idea that um, as they get older, losing weight becomes harder for their body, where actually it's just that you just burn less calories maybe as you're getting older so you have to take in less but yeah. there's no there's no biological thing that's that's blocking your body from mm -hmm. losing weight if the balance is in the right place yeah that's it there's nothing stopping you it's just it can be the case often it's not even anything to worry about uh, it's just the numbers shift slightly and it just comes back to those numbers if for argument's sake your daily calorie needs were 1800 calories and then say for example you went through the menopause your calorie balance your calorie needs do come down slightly 
even if it went down to 1700 from 1800 that just means that you've now got a maintenance calorie level of 1700 so if you wanted to lose weight you just have to go for 1600 on average and and that's it like jim said there's nothing stopping you it's just that you have to do things slightly differently than you might have done before and that's a really good thing to know like that's a really empowering thing to know because if you have these ideas and these beliefs that as you get older it's harder to lose weight as you get older it's not possible to lose weight and all these things that can that would just leave you feeling really helpless and like you can't do anything about it anxiety is true yeah like because you absolutely can at every stage it just the numbers just change a little bit and you just need to work with those new numbers yeah. and that is a really good thing to know yeah i think to just i think an effective way to wrap that up would be to just really quickly outline our progress process that we use as a part of the strategy that comes with the smart plan which is uh, and i had another question actually that i forgot about um someone asked me they're burning X amount of calories a day based on their like polar uh, yeah. watch calculation. Um, so how many calories do they need to eat to be in a deficit? Um, and, and my answer was this, like that amount of calories that your polar is telling you you're burning is a guess. Yeah. Just like when you create a smart plan, you put your weight and height and age, etc., into the system. And it gives you a number of calories that we think will be an effective amount to eat to put you in a deficit but it is a guess there's there's nothing on the planet outside of putting a like breathing apparatus around your face for an entire day there's nothing that's going to tell you exactly what the right amount of calories is the only way that you can know is through experimenting um which is put something in place go through the process of monitoring how that affects your body weight and then adjust accordingly if needed. And that's our progress process. You, you find a, a target calorie amount, you weigh yourself, you use that amount, and then you weigh yourself again and see if it worked. And if it didn't, you adjust it. Yep. That's yep, the only that's it. Yeah, I like wrapping it up there because like you said, it just sort of summarizes the fact that nothing is ever going to leave you helpless because all you have to do is follow that progress process. Do something see if it works if it does keep doing it if it doesn't or if it stops doing it then just change it and everybody wins that's how you win that's how you win everything everything in life jim everything in life i want to say it we going <laughs> everything in life <laughs> <laughs> right cool let's wrap up the letters there then so let's move on to what we're reading so this is the section where me and jim each let you know about something we've read or watched or listened to that is either useful for you in some way or it's just a good thing. Uh, each week, one of us does the useful thing. Each week, the other one does just the cool thing to check out. And this week, it's my turn to go over the useful thing. So I've got a book this week that you might have seen. It's called The Little Book of Happiness. It is a very little book. If you're watching on a video, this is it. Very small. If you're listening on a podcast, just imagine a small book. Um, and basically what it is, is each page just has these little sort of quotes or verses or little nuggets of knowledge. And every page is different. And some of them are kind of deep. Some of them are just funny. It's like just opening it at a random place, for example. This page says, dance like there's no one watching. That is it. And, it. and it's true. It's a thing you should do because everybody loves dancing. A thing with dancing that I actually love is, and something I kind of try and live by for myself, is that, you know, when you go to a party, say like a family party in a function room, yeah. and there's always that awkward phase where there's, like nobody dancing, but you know, everyone's going to be dancing eventually. Yeah. And there's always somebody who has to be the first one, even though being that first one, you might feel like people are looking at you. 
that person who is always first gets to dance more than everybody else <laughs> and always gets to have more fun than everybody else. That's true. Do you know what I mean? And it just, just remembering that is just something that I think is great to apply. Like if you do it first, it might be scary, but it means you get to enjoy it more than anyone else. You get more time dancing. Do you know what I mean? First one in, last one out. Yeah, exactly. Here's another one. I don't know what this says. I'm just going to read it. Always look on the bright side. Positive thinking is like domino rolling. Once you set off on a positive train of thought, it will gather momentum and speed until you reach your destination. Happiness. It's just cool stuff. Nice. Yeah. You know I mean? Just all these little tiny nuggets and some of them you'll read and be like, what is that? Like, <laughs> the beautiful spring came and when nature resumes her loveliness, the human soul is apt to revive also. I just read that today and I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> I have no idea. But somebody else might have just listened to me say that and be like, wow, yeah. that's changed my entire day. Um, yeah, it's just a great book. It's, uh, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, as always, we'll put the link to it in the description. Um, it's called The Little Book of Happiness. I've also read one called The Little Book of Mindfulness, which is really cool as well. Uh, but yeah, great little books. I think I got that one for Abby, actually. I think she got it downstairs. Yeah. Nice. Um, all right, my one is uh, another Netflix one that we've Classic. been watching. Um, it's called Money Heist. Don't know heard if of it. Yeah, a lot of people heard of it. A lot of people uh, speculate, not speculative. What's the word? Uh, cautious? Yeah. Suspicious? Say cautious. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a lot of people are like, don't want to do it because it's Spanish, but it's oh, okay. dubbed over in English. Um, and and it, it's pretty good. It's actually, it's a good watch. And, and the fact that it's dubbed isn't too bad. Like I, yeah. I put off, we put off watching it for a long time. And I've sort of just been, she's really into it. Um, and I've just been drifting in and out of it, but it, it is really good. The best thing to do is put the subtitles on which we usually have to do anyway because the dogs are buying a lot. So we can't yeah, yeah, yeah. put the subtitles on and, and obviously have it dubbed over. And you've got two um, various scripts that you can <laughs> Yeah, I like that because like the, the same, oh. they're not the same, they're never the same. I've noticed that. But um, yeah, cool. Yeah, so it's a pretty good watch. Give that a go. I like it. All right, cool. Well, that's what we're reading slash watching. Again, I'll put the links for that in the description. And uh, just before we go, like I said earlier, the Smart Plan launches three weeks today. So if you want to be one of the first to know when the Smart Plan is available so that you can get yours, sign up to our email newsletter, which you can do with the link in the description. And we'll see you then. We're excited for that. Yeah, yeah. definitely sign up. I think um, there's going to be a lot, a lot coming over the next few weeks before the launch. So if you yeah. don't want to miss anything, get on that email list um, and you'll get all the news that we've got. Yeah, yeah, because we let people know whenever there's a new podcast. Uh, we sort of highlight the best content from the week as well. So it's well worth getting onto the email list even just for that as well. Yeah, as it's it's, it's just easy to miss stuff on social media nowadays. Like yeah. Facebook's only showing you like a certain amount of the stuff that you're, the pages that you're following. So it's mm -hmm. a good way to make sure that you get every bit of news that's coming from us, especially in this lead up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right. That's it then. Anything else from you? Um, no. No. All right. Cool. Good. Well, that's everything then. So thanks for tuning in to Nutri IQ Radio this week. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the show if you're listening as a podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Nutri IQ TV, if you're watching on there. And if you want to follow us around social media, make sure you like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram at NutriIQ without the dash on Instagram. So it's goodbye from me, Sean. And goodbye from me, Jim. See you all later. See you later.